In this episode of Vanguard, we're taking you inside a prison. Now, while most people think that being in prison is like being cut off from the rest of the world, it's not. Recently, the California Department of Corrections offered access inside the prison systems to look at a problem that afflicts prisons across America. Contributor Janet Choi went to check it out. I'm driving in the middle of nowhere, halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco, headed to Avenal State Prison. I've been invited there to follow the prison's internal security unit, the first time any camera crew has been allowed to see the ISU team in action. Their mission? To stop contraband from getting into prison. It may not make sense, but prisons aren't totally sealed off environments. And I was invited to Avenal to see just how hard it is to keep inmates from getting stuff they're not supposed to have. Contraband is a problem in prisons across the country because nearly all violence and gang activity in prison can be traced back to it. They promised full access to their division and an introduction to a new epidemic in prisons, something that you and I didn't even know was a problem. This is all prison property out here that you'll see. As we drove up to meet with the ISU, something was going on. Yeah, gear it up, let's roll. There's a stabbing out there. So we were about to go inside and interview the guys who seized the contraband, only they get called out because there was a stabbing on the yard. All right. All right, there's two visitors. While the ISU was busy, I asked Sergeant Carter to show me the prison block and introduce me to the prisoners. I wanted to find out what the prisoners were allowed to have. What do they have in each, each, what do you call it, bunk area? In each dorm? Yeah? You have so little space, what do you keep in your space? Uh, mostly everything's under my bunk. Nothing really fits in the locker because it's too small, so we got everything under our bunks and bags and stuff. I got a lot of tattoos. It's my daughter right there. Dora, SpongeBob. It's all for my daughter. It's just, you know, give something to tribute her, so I remember her, because I don't really see her that much, you know, because I'm incarcerated all the time. Since probably I was about 16, I've been on the streets probably about five months, six months, and it's in and out, juvenile hall, prison, jail. Well, this is my bunk. You know, uh, I guess I got a, uh, this is a book, a uh, college book that I'm reading, uh, a watch that I have, got in the package. This is a radio, they no longer allow you to have them, allow them to come in, but if you have them, you get to keep them. Yeah, I guess there's a list of CDs. You know, and them is uh, two people's combined, me and my bunkies combined, because you're only allowed to have 12. It's not much, but it helps, you know, you do your time a little better, you know? So you won't be as stressed out. If you get stressed out, you can jump up, you know, read a book, you can listen to some music, calm yourself down. You actually have more stuff than most of the guys we've seen here. Yeah, well, actually, because I've been down a little longer, you know, and I, as over the years, things accumulate. How many pairs of shoes do you guys have? Because I'm just seeing 50 pairs of shoes. Under the... I got two. These, I got these, and I got uh, the ones I play outside in. That's all white guys got to play volleyball. Prisoners are allowed a large variety of things, many of which surprised me. Guitars, televisions, ramen. I rejoined the ISU for a tour of prison contraband. This is just a fraction. A lot of stuff we've uh, gotten rid of, like the tobacco, we, you know, we obviously throw that away, but a lot of stuff has been, you know, we get rid of it, so. From month to month, I try to photograph our discoveries. Tobacco, narcotics, weapons. It's amazing the stuff they try to smuggle in. It's weird. Uh, like, I, I think this stuff was... Uh, uh, Rogaine. Oh, Rogaine, yeah. Oh, it, that's funny. You know, they have to look their best when they're in the inmate population. So. <laughs> Pounds and pounds of tobacco. We brought only just a few out because we dispose of the stuff because we don't have enough evidence, uh, space in our evidence room to hold this stuff. Right. Is that what it looked like? Oh, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is ready to go. That's... Uh, a little bit of lube and uh, this is going in. This will be, this will be go prison this will be a prison wallet, wallet there, rectal cavity is where this will go. Uh, most guys will be able to bring three of these at a time. 
there are some seasoned veterans that can do quite a bit more than that. Yeah, we'll just cover up the sharp parts and uh, insert it where it needs to be. And then what, you give them a laxative or something? I mean, No, we'll put them on a contraband watch. Oh. You know, if, because it, they're not going to tell us what's up there. During the unclothed body search and where he has to cough, you'll see yeah. packaging or some part of it. And then, oh, that's a clue. You might want to put him on contraband. Or they'll lube themselves up. They'll have a lot of, let's say, Vaseline or you know, lubricant in that area. And it's like, well. A wet spot on yeah, their pants. Exactly. Yeah, like, no. But you can only imagine where someone would hide one of these, right? Yeah. Pounds and pounds of tobacco. Roughly, this is a can of bugler. Okay, this has been vacuum sealed. Um, a can of bugler on the street goes for about 12, 12 bucks. Okay, oh, the papers and all. With with rolling papers, of course. Okay, this right here in the institution is about four hundred dollars. If you buy the, the can rate, it's around three to four hundred dollars. If you break that down and sell it at individual cigarettes, well, like most of them do, you're probably looking at a thousand dollars. It's a big lucrative business right now. And is it organized crime? Is it random, just trying to make a buck? Well, um, it's gang related. A lot of them, I mean, it's for the gang. I mean, it's, right. uh, I mean, bottom line is gangs and dope and gangs and money, and, uh, and that's what you have. Uh, this, their sole mission is to make money. It's eleven $1 hundred and fifty-three dollars. Um, as you can see, he counted it and wrote it on the envelope for us, so we didn't have to do the math. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure that's just one small sample of what's out there. Contraband is big business, and all business in prison is run by the gangs. I returned to the yard to see if any of the inmates would share their experiences in the prison economy. They were reluctant to speak. You guys have been having some issues up here. Can you say why there's been rioting? Well, some of us just don't get along sometimes. There's some things we can't talk about, some things that, that's just, it's our world in I mean, there. Yeah, you can, you can stay by yourself, but then if something happens, if you get in trouble by yourself, you're going to... You're, on, you're your by own. yourself. You're on your own, completely. And they, like a lot of people, like I just had a visit last weekend, and my mom always asked me, well, why do you have to get involved? That's just, that's prison, Mom. So you're always prepared? Don't always be ready. The inmates were signaled from off camera to stop answering questions, and our interview was over. It made sense. I was being escorted by an officer, and they were being watched by a gang member who refused to be filmed. I was starting to understand. 90% of prison is spent watching. The guards watch the prisoners, and the prisoners watch the guards. It's a never-ending game of hide-and-seek, where the stakes are anything but playful. So when we met you today, you immediately left because there was an assault in one of the yards? There was an assault on one of the yards, um, and a go-to was called, and what we do is we go out to assist. Is you know, the gang-related activity is so prevalent that you assume automatically, or, I mean, I know you're still investigating, but you assume an assault like that is because someone didn't do their end of the deal? Something like that needs to be sanctioned. They just can't go out there and just say, well, you know, come on, dude, let's go out there and hit this guy. It doesn't work that way. They have to get the okay from their superiors to go do this. A lot of your assaults depend on this right here, on the flow of contraband coming in. You know, this is all business. It's all about money. It's nothing, not, let, don't let nobody tell you anything different. It's all about money. I traveled to Avenal to embed myself with the ISU, the internal security unit charged with rooting out prison contraband. Avenal State Prison was designed to hold 2,500 prisoners. It currently holds 6,500. That's 260% capacity. Avenal is a level two prison. That means there's open housing and the prisoners are allowed more freedom. So, the fact that they don't have cells with doors, does it make it easier or harder to find contraband? Well, this, I, I would say it makes it harder, because they can move the contraband around a lot easier. Because they don't have any cells or doors to move it. You search one dorm, and they could have just taken it out and moved it to a next dorm. I'm sort of playing like a mental video game <laughs> as I'm standing here. There's like a thousand different places you could hide things. Yeah. Like under your hat. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> in their socks and in, in, in anything that they have they can sew it into the clothing you would, right. it's very difficult to find yeah, sure. contraband how would you secure a place like this and keep it free of contraband is there any way to actually do it totally 100 percent now 
I don't believe there is a way. Conservative estimate, we catch maybe 50% of it. Wow. That's conservative. Right. Uh, because there's just too many ways for the inmates to bring stuff in. With open cells and thousands of hiding places, finding contraband seemed hopeless. The ISC wanted to show me the newest trend in prison contraband, an item that was showing up in prisons across the country. These three bags are from December of 08. Wow. And this is just a portion of what we found that month. This isn't everything. Now, if you look at this photograph, this was done, this is one seizure. You see all the cell phones? They had them all individually marked up as to, in little packages, who, who was getting what, like initials or little Oh, it was already pre-filled. Yeah, so it was all ready to go. It's ready to sell, you know, somebody had already purchased this phone. Different various type cell phones, uh, from low end to high end type cell phones. Um, the little, what we call throw down, throw away phones, up to the Blackberries, the iPhones. Mm -hmm. You know, iPhone app. And the new Blackberry. The Blackberries on the main line Blackberry are... just came out. Right. So, here's a Blackberry. Well, kind of nice phone. What is that, the Storm? Blackberry yeah. Storm? Yeah, that's what I've got. Do you have any idea what this stuff is going for? Sure. The low-end phones, they're going for now, well, yeah, three to five hundred, because the more we apprehend the stuff, price and demand goes, you know, price, of course, goes up. The higher-end cell phones, you're looking at a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, depending on, like, Blackberry iPhone. Um, if it's camera capability, it's five, about five to seven hundred dollars. The iPhones and this new, uh, this one Blackberry. here is the newest Blackberry Touch, I think it's called the Storm. That just came out a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. they're very expensive just to buy, right? So, or they'll alter their books, you know, they'll put their little cell phones in there, their chargers. Okay, so you open it up, looks like a soup. However, that's how ingenious these guys have gotten. Okay, you open this up. And there's the cell phone. You get the bars of soap out. There's a, there you go, haul it out for uh, the cell phone. Yeah, yeah they, they get, they get DVD, DVD players uh, in movies. You know, during um, I get a DVD player with some movies and I'll rent it out to this guy over here for an hour or so. You know, different movies. Right. All recent titles, something, a lot of it porn. It's an all-male facility. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a market. So, yeah. There was a guy that was conducting a little video rental. And he had a sheet of paper of all the of videos that he had, and he'd give it to the other inmates, so his homeboys, hey, here you go, and it was a rental. The same guy that owned that cell phone, that owned that iPhone, too. Didn't have a job, but, you know, you looked inside of his locker, and he had oh, food and shoes. I mean, he was just, just hooked up. What about charging? Charging? Mm. We'll show you what happens with that. The when they get the charger, the first thing they do is modify it. This is a cell phone charger with the housing broke off of it. That's what you have left, a little circuit board. They open up the radios, they graft it in, they wire it in, and they put another headphone jack. And now, that's all they need to charge their phone. Who are they calling? You know, what are the pictures of? The major, a lot of them, well, a lot of them are calling uh, loved ones, you know, the girlfriend. Uh, a lot of them are cover, using it for their illegal clandestine business of orchestrating more uh, contraband drops narcotics drops, um, doing business not just here at this institution, up and down the state with other institutions. They're coordinating. Yeah. We have inmates who are coordinating cell phone, um, using their cell phone, coordinating escapes. May 4th, we had an escape, a walk away from the institution. The inmate had a cell phone. Huh. The inmate had a cell phone, was able to coordinate with somebody out on the street, and they picked him up in the city of Avenal within the half an hour of uh, him leaving the institution. They're coordinating drug drops, which we proved that already. Um, assaults, assaults on, I mean, you know, gangs can conduct their, their business now. They can uh, orchestrate uh, assaults, murders, and there's really no way to detect it because you got a cell phone. I felt like I understood the dangers of having cell phones from the officer's perspective, but I was curious to hear what inmates think of the ban. I was sort of surprised to hear that you guys aren't allowed to have cell phones. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. You're surprised to hear that? No, well... So are we. That's what we don't know. Why? We don't understand. Me. We love the internet. The phone's down there, but you're going to pay, what, five, ten dollars a phone call So for 15 minutes. Do you think cell phones should be allowed in prison? Yeah, personally, yes. You know, I mean, I don't think it's a major uh, 
problem, just being honest with you, you know, I mean, it would save my mama a whole bunch of money on collect calls, you know, for one. I guess people can make phone calls that are unmonitored, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and make threats or what have we, right? But, you know, the same thing can be done anyway, you know, you know, if somebody had, you know, was trying to get something done to somebody, you know, they can do it, you know, there's no limit to it, there's no stopping it, actually. So I don't think cell phones, you know, add to that or subtract from that. What about cell phones? Were cell phones around? No, when... no. <laughs> there wasn't no such thing as a cell phone when I went to jail. Have you ever used a cell phone? No, I don't even know how to use it. <laughs> I've never even heard them or seen them. Oh, that's funny. So I don't know what they are. California State Prison Solano in Vacaville, California is a three hour drive from Avenal Prison. I traveled to Solano because I was curious to see how other prisons were dealing with contraband. Cell phones off. I was especially curious whether cell phones were showing up in the prison population. Right there's a, just about um, 1,800 phones. They were. Wow, I haven't seen one of those before. <laughs> I think our money would be a little disappointed. The ones that are wrapped, is that wrapped first? This was in the... Um, he had this secreted in his uh, anal cavity. What's the word for that? Convincing? What's the word? Keister. Keistering. <laughs> Keistering, yes, he had a keister. Um, How do you find that? Pardon me? How did you find it? Sometimes when we do a, an unquote body search, and, and the way that's done is they have to uh, bend and squat and, and spread their cheeks. Um, and if it's if you don't have enough light, you use a flashlight and shine it on their their anal area. A lot of times you can see. Um, let's say maybe this was a, a, a string that was tied around this for him to get a hold of and pull out. Uh. So you look for something that that really shouldn't be there. Right. Or if it's um, got moisture around it, such as maybe you would use a, a, a lotion right. or something like that, a, a glistening. Then uh, sometimes you you ask them to give it up and they will. Um, we had one guy that basically couldn't, and so he had to go out to the hospital, and they had to give him a little help um, in removing it. Um, but again, I can't force you. There's some things that I can't force you to do. Right. So, okay, so where was Could this? Use where? my grandmother's method and just rub your belly yeah. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had been impressed by the ingenuity of the inmates in Avenal. I asked if the inmates here had any tricks. I'm going to remove this. Yeah. Remove this, and you can see where he has the circuit board installed here that he's added to the fan motor. And there's another wire coming out the back. And if we turn it around, you can see where he's added that circuit board to, to basically connect his charger that leads to the cell phone. Well, we've been finding these. Um, quite often now. This is probably our eighth or ninth fan that we found like this. Wow. Cell phones have become a necessity for the outside world, but I was curious why the prisoners were going to such lengths to have them on the inside. Prisons, either you adapt or you don't. I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a cell, you know, you're, you're looking out maybe 12 hours a day, if, if not longer. You don't, you don't understand how lonely prison can be. I mean, I miss I miss the social life of being with with a significant other. I miss being with my family. Do you have visitors that come and visit you? No, uh, of course. I've been married three times. Oh, you have? Yeah. But you've been here for nineteen nine years. Nineteen. You've I've been, been down nineteen years, married three times. So you knew th what you're saying is you knew all these women before they came and visited not you. Not necessarily. <laughs> no, not necessarily. I mean, the, I mean, I put an ad in one time in Sacramento Bee. And that's how I met my first wife, you know, so, you know, there's, and, wow, then, and then, then you have people on the internet, I mean, things are different, times yeah. have changed, so, yeah, and I'm about to get married again, maybe. Inmates were reluctant to talk about contraband, fearing retaliation from the gangs. As silly as it seemed, we we're forced to use code words. If you wanted to get, like, a certain type of cereal that wasn't in the catalog, 
you'd be able to get it? If I really wanted a cell phone, uh, and if I had the money for it, I'd, you know, I'd probably go buy it. How? I, How? I, I, you could probably bring it in. If the money's right, she, she, she's willing to do it. Now you wonder how I'm able to meet people, you know, that's, that's just one sure way of doing it, if, if it comes down to that. Talking to this inmate, I understood perhaps the biggest allure of cell phones. They were away off the yard, if only for a moment. Want to show us your whistle? So hopefully I won't have to use this thing. This whistle is in case I find myself in trouble. Typical cell, what are you looking for? In this case, we're looking for any kind of contraband. Uh, it could be weapons, could be drugs, could be drug paraphernalia, could be cell phones, um, could be any type of um, article that they can't have. And what we'll be looking is pretty, virtually everywhere in the cell. Um, the common areas being in their, inside their books, inside their coffee pots, um, under the lids of the toilets, and some of their hiding places now, as I was telling you before, could be behind these safe plates. Safe, see, if you can tell right here, where they've got little gouges, they may have twisted this, gotten this open, and put cell phones behind there. Um, just got a uh, paper clip. figure out a way to to remove the rivets off these doors mm. and this door is hollow so once they move the, these rivets they could basically pry that plate off right and we have found when they need to, to access that they just basically pull it off and they have their their contraband tied to a string at the bottom of the door wow it's hard to breathe in here it's hot i'm sweating there's no open windows in there this is pretty much a staple item for these guys as far as food goes. good old ramen noodles yeah. College food. It's cheap, it's filling. They'll have maybe a hundred of these things in a bag. Um, usually the one at the very bottom is the one with the contraband in it. Is this guy fairly affluent in there? He has lots of stuff. This isn't this isn't anything. Um, some of these cells have you know five, six, seven, eight bags of canteen. Wow. Typically, if they have a lot of canteen, it's it's um, it's generally a sign that he's probably involved in some type of legal activity, um, maybe drug related, maybe cell phone related, maybe. But he's he's being paid. This is their source of, of payment too. Um, so they use that to pay off debts, um, to make these guys bet in here. They bet on college teams, on sports teams. Um, so that's this is the money. It takes an hour or so to search a single cell, which makes the battle against contraband seem hard to win. But then, Officer Medina found something. He has a phone in here somewhere. Why do you see that? Um, he has an altered AC adapter. Um, you can tell that it's been added on there. Huh. So more than see where it's cut. So more than likely, that's that fit a cell phone. How do you know it's in here and not on him? It could be. It could be. It's just. It could be on him. He could have it walking around on the yard, um, or it could be in here. So you just have to find it. Have the AC adapter is contraband. Now that it's been altered, it's already been altered. So yeah, it's contraband. When you find something like that, you, you kind of step it up a little bit, and now you want to find it. So the next step is to go find him. Or he could have passed it off to one of the homeboys also. So it's like chasing and finding a needle in a haystack at this point. 
Oh, we got beat this time. Sometimes, we, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. We leave a receipt um, letting the inmate know that, hey, these things have been confiscated. So. Yeah. It's rather considerate. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you going to show him that you have the adapter? Yeah, I believe this is the inmate here, actually, these two guys. This is my friend. This is Sally. I'll leave you a receipt for the search. Okay. What I'd like to do is, is um, you know, let the inmate know what I took, why I took it. So that's what I did. Solano State Prison is designed to hold 2,610 prisoners. It currently holds 6,047. I was inside California State Prison Solano to investigate contraband in prison. In my search, I had been surprised to see how many things the prisoners were allowed to have. So we're standing in front of the canteen. This is where the inmates can buy things off of a list. This is where money can be useful. So on this list, you have everything from brown rice to razors to TV adapters. Is there anything that they uh, don't have that you wish they had? Mm. It's a lot of things I wish they had, like shrimp, uh, clams and stuff, but we have to get them through quarterly packages. But other than that, they, they, you know, they have most of the stuff that I eat anyway, you know. Uh, sausages, uh, donuts, uh, lollipops, a lot of sweets. I already have food from yesterday. You got a food here? Yeah, can I please get some more sausages? more sausages? You're going to eat all that sausage by yourself? No, I mean, yeah, I eat it, but over a period of time. Yeah. The prisoner passed out popsicles to his friends on the yard. At first, I thought he was simply being nice, but I recalled in here, food is money. Is this a friendly gesture or payback for a debt? I found this inmate listening to a Walkman. Is there any stuff that you wish you could have that you can't have? DVD players. <laughs> you miss DVDs. Yeah, yeah, we don't get DVD players. Yeah, we wish you had that, though. That'd be cool. I'll give it to them. They played uh, The Spirit. You seen The Spirit? Uh-uh. And you seen this a new movie out. They played that on Channel 7. It's like a movie channel for the prisons. Yeah. All across the prisons, Channel 7. You know what I mean? Popsicles, dominoes, Walkman, they seem to have it pretty good. But like all things in here, the truth is not on the surface. Um, an alarm went off in one of the buildings, so that's why if you look around, everybody's seated right now. Turns out it was a false activation. I've been told that violence and contraband are intimately linked, and nearly all violence is sanctioned by the gangs. So if you look in the yard, you can start to see the beginnings of how the prisons are segregated. In this corner, you can see the Southern Hispanics. On the other side, all the way on the other side, you can see the Blacks and the Northern Hispanics and the Whites over here. If you look at these two gentlemen over here on this bench, that just sat down with the baseball hats on. They're, uh, they're Norteños, and that's where they're supposed to be when yard opens up. That's their post, that's their bench. They stay there. Now, the rest of the Norteños will, will walk the yard, and like, like Officer Sandoval said, they'll count. They'll count the other factions on the yard, and they'll let everybody know, okay, this is the number we have out here on the Blacks, this is that we have on the Sereños, on the Whites, and so on. And then they'll adjust their, their yard activity, and they'll post up outside the, on different areas of the yard. And they watch for us walking on the yard also, and they'll give little little, little cues to each other that if they see us coming down the, the run here, that he may take off his hat, put it on backwards, he may scratch his head, something uh -huh. to signal everybody else on the yard that the squad's coming on the yard. Mm -hmm. So all that illegal activity tends to stop. stop. They don't like us out here. With so many different gangs sharing the yard at the same time, violence seemed inevitable. Part of the ISU's job is to keep prison weapons off the yard. Sandoval is probably looking for weapons as we speak. There he is. See him over there by Building 9? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. He's got a nose, you know, like the dogs have it for, for drugs. Go he's, he's got a nose for weapons. Yeah. What do you find, knives? Oh, yeah. Lots of knives. 
usually knives in here, they're rods or flat stock, sharpened up, handles ready to go. See how loose that is? But there being something there, it might have been, it might have moved it already. How often do you find stuff out here? Um, sometimes you'll find it, like maybe three or four a day. You can find weapons buried all over. They bury them usually around their exercise areas. They have one guy responsible for doing that, to hide the weapons out here. If, if the time comes where they want to stab somebody or they're going to use the weapon, that one person will tell them, go this, go over here, it's right there, pick it up and go take it and use it. So if they order a guy to, to hit somebody, they'll tell them where to go get the knife from. Goes around and... Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. <laughs> Prison gangs are organized, but they're so closely monitored, I wondered how they taught each other their codes of conduct. Sergeant Sandoval introduced me to wheelas. What do you call them, wheelas? Wheelas. They're called uh, basically filters. This one is an abreastment, proper new arrival seating. This is how they tell you, they even tell their new arrival inmates where to sit, how to set up an assault to how to do weapons, how to everything. Who's on their hit list, who's good, who's bad, who's running what yard, who's running what institution? It's, what, one, it's like eight lines of text to the size of my finger now. Norteños recognize the true purpose of our struggle in a close-knit raza. Let us be the enlightenment and inspiration to those behind the walls and stand victim to the prejudice and movement of the misused. It does remind me of high school when, not that I ever did it, but what other, you know, what now, other students would do. When they get them writing this, they roll it up, roll it up, roll it up, roll it up, till they get a, a bindle about that big around, about that long, and then they hide it. They what, go to the bathroom and they pull a string or whatever it is? Yeah, or just catch it. And then they hand. pass them out. And what he'll do, he'll pass it off to another guy. He'll wash it off, and then the other guy will wrap it in another uh, glove or some more cellophane, and then he'll put it up here, and then so oh on and gosh. so on and so on. I had on no so idea on. there was a movement in they transferring. Pass it. They pass it off. It, it goes from point A all the way to point Z. Z being the main man. He collects all of that. But by the time it gets and to him, it's been like 20 other rectums. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, thousands of these. Because it, it has good, all good information. See, this is how to make a weapon. Wow. It tells wow. you the detailed instructions on how to make one. These are both instructions. This is obviously some sort of stabbing. It says final product. These are bigger than the ones we saw yesterday. They have the machine that cuts these, and mm -hmm. so some of these guys will be up there and they'll cut them and then hide them and then throw them over the fence or keister them to bring them down the hill. You say that like that's so natural to uh, put a knife. You know what? To these guys, this. You know? They do that every day. Weapons, drugs, mm -hmm. um, cell phones. A knife? Like, uh, how, yeah. how, how is that even physically possible? What, he, what he'll do is he'll wrap it with a, with a sheet so that when he goes up, he doesn't puncture himself. And we've had instances where the inmate has gone to the staff and said, I need to go to the doctor. I'm, I'm having problems. Or what's wrong? I think I, my, my weapon is stuck up there and I can't get it out. And yeah, and yeah. he'll be in pain. Yeah. Because it punctured his intestine because he couldn't get it out. Or, you know, they, they walk around with them and they're used to walking and then all of a sudden it's, you know, the yard has to get down and they have to go down quick. And right. Like, and it, it'll puncture them that way. Right. So, yeah. They had a guy tell me that he needed to go to the doctor and, oh, well, what's the matter? And he was, he was in the cell and it, it actually wasn't a weapon. He was seeing how many pencils he could, um, keister. I said, why are you doing that? Well, I just want to see how many I can get up there. I was still curious. Besides weapons that were made on the yard, how does contraband get into the prison? I was told the visitor's room is another entry point. I asked for a tour. Hello. We're going to go into the 
I pictured like a glass window and yeah. you, can tr you can give them, hand them over all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. That's why I was so confused. I couldn't figure out how are visitors, I mean, how can you pass things through the glass? Right. Contact visiting. It's contact it. visiting. And so, like, say you were here visiting somebody and that person, as long as they, they're, um, we, we have them, and the tables are low for a reason. Right. Okay, so as long as we... So you can't hand it right, underneath. Right, you know, because if it was up here, then we couldn't monitor really what was going on under the table. We have up to 250 people in this room, and how many people would be monitoring them? Um, we have two officers that um, are um, on the floor. Well, actually, one is up on the podium. We have a monitoring system up there, um, and one is monitoring the, the cameras that are in this, that are all over the visiting room. They're all over. And an officer stays up there to do that, and then one's constantly roving the visiting room. What percentage gets in through visitors? Mostly what's going to come in through visiting is going to be drugs, the balloons. So what I'll do is, because there's a lot of people in the visiting room, I will open this. I'm over there by the machine. If I, have, if, if I came in with something um, inserted in my body, I would go into the bathroom, right. okay, take it out, put it in my pocket, right. and then come in here and go over here. Or we've actually seen it on video where they're sitting here and they're kind of like this, and they'll take it out of their pocket and drop it in right. here, okay? And then I hand it to you, and as you're eating your chips, right. okay, you'll eat a couple of chips, and then you'll go like this, and you'll start putting balloons in there and swallowing them. Not too many cell phones, because they're harder to get from here, um, from wherever she has it um, into here into because it's easier to insert rectally than it is to swallow but we have had inmates that'll actually take something out of here but if, if it's too big to swallow and they'll actually kind of go like this and sit there and then the next thing you know you see them listening you see them go and then on the video you see them go whoop well we know what that is Solano State Prison was allowing a documentary crew to film its officers searching for contraband. So far, they had found a cell phone charger, but no phones. The prisoners were skilled at keeping their valuables hidden. Solano was showing off their newest weapon. Meet Caesar, the cell phone sniffing dog. Very friendly. Very friendly. You can pet him. Oh, friend. Friend. No, he's, he's not attacked range He's very friendly. Hey, ooh, you gave me a kiss. This so, early in the morning? Hi. Ah, oh, sweetie. Do you want to play bowling? Want you ball? Officer Conrad offered to give us a demonstration of Caesar's talents. Go find it. What's in there? What's in there? See the cell phone? On the bottom? Good boy. That's a good boy. What do we got there? We got something? And he thinks he's looking for that toy. It's just a piece of canvas. It's his toy. That's all it is. And he thinks he's looking for that. Yeah. So what do you do? Rub a bunch of cell phones on the toy? No, actually, what we do is we take it in the beginning. It's, it's called transfer motor. I'll take a big glass jar, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll take uh, rags, and we permeate the odor into them, wrap them up like, like this, and just play throw toys. Got and it. what we'll do is transfer that odor into the real substance. In other words, when, I, when I'm searching, I'll put his toy, say, uh, over here in, in a stack of boxes, and maybe a foot away, I'll, I'll put the substance, that, the actual substance we're looking for, and as he comes across, he'll hit on that, and then he'll hit on the real thing. Got it. So, is there another one? Come, let's go find it. Anything else to do? Oh, 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 oh. I was impressed by Caesar, and I wanted to see him in action. I joined the ISU for a random cell phone sweep. As soon as we hit the yard, we got to move right to the building. We can't stop. We can't. We got to go right there. Yeah. As soon as we hit the yard, 
all the signals are gonna go up and everyone's gonna start getting alerted. Sure. I'll just follow you. Just keep up. As soon as we hit the yard, the inmates began warning the other inmates. We have to listen for uh, all the woof, the woof woofs, what they say when they see the dog coming. Yeah, you hear the whistles, the inmates alerting each other that we're coming. You start hearing the toilets flushing. It's difficult to hear on camera, but dozens of toilets are flushing at once. Yeah. Caesar seemed really excited, but couldn't find a cell phone. Are there days where you're not? You know, there are days. You know, it's like anything else. There's days that, like right now, um, in the beginning, he's so energetic. He's been sitting in the car for an hour. And what happens is he just, he's got so much energy built up. When you see him, when he starts biting on stuff, he's frustrated. There you go. Do you um, snoop through your brother and sister's things when you were a kid? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I can't say that. I can't say that. I had two older sisters, and I, you know, I tended to look through their drawers, <laughs> read their diary a few times. <laughs> More than likely, has a cell phone. Um, <laughs> phone numbers. He's got phone numbers. One eight seven. One eight seven seven four seven six blow. Of course, the last place we're going to search is coming inside. presence of the odor is still there and the same thing with something like this so just keep an eye on it the warning system whistling and barking had worked the ISU found nothing besides a list of pornographic phone numbers at that moment officer Medina came to tell us that he had just found something in the first cell that we were in it was above the area Caesar could search it turned out Caesar had been right. Wow. Looks like a part of the radio. Yeah, it does. I look out. It blends right in. Lieutenant Sandy, control. So we'll we'll process that as evidence. Um, the inmate. Um, who lives in this rack will get a, 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 a 115, uh, a rule violation report. He'll probably get another phone within a couple weeks. Did you likely. try turning it on? Um, more than likely, what they do, so we can't access the information, because this one feels kind of light. You remove the battery. Uh -uh. Still! <laughs> Thank you.